Hey viewers, welcome back to Quick Tips. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving holiday, those of you that are in the U.S. at least. Uh, it's getting to the holiday season here and things are slowing down, but I still have a few more tips for you before the year is over. So today I wanted to show you some tricks and mechanics behind working with legends. I'm going to show you three things. The first thing is going to be just the basics of working with a legend and the styling. Uh, the second thing is going to be a little trick for creating some uh, buttons that are a little more, maybe a little more aesthetically pleasing, a little bit different that you might want to use. And then the third thing is going to be um, for more of our power users that are looking at expanding legends past 29 values, we know that's a common request. So uh, I'm going to go over those three things and let's dive in. So for today, we're going to look at data that's honey production in the United States. And we're going to focus on this chart that's on the bottom right here. And this chart shows a colony yield and the average deviation. So each bar represents the, uh, the yield for the colonies in that state. And if it's above zero, it's better than average. If it's below zero, it's worse than average. And there's some of these uh, options here in the legend by default. And this can be really helpful when you're authoring. It gives you a shortcut right there. Now, the first trick I'm going to show you is that if you right-click this and you go to Properties, and I right-clicked right on the Color by Selector, it'll actually take me to the Properties submenu uh, for colors. So it saves me a couple clicks rather than going to Visualization Properties. If you go to Visualization Properties, then you have to maybe navigate to colors. So just right-clicking right in the Column Selector will just give you a, a quick shortcut. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the options in the Legend menu. So here, you can, you, know, you can turn on or off your legend. That's also what the, this little uh, hamburger icon does over here, this little list icon that will turn on and off the legend. You can choose if you want the legend on the left or the right. And I'm going to kind of clean things up. So I'm going to turn off everything that I don't need here, and I'm going to leave color by. I want color by in here because that's very explanatory on what's happening in this chart. When I click color by, uh, I can actually turn off the title, and what that's going to do is just leave region there. So it took color by off, and that's just one other simple thing to um, kind of simplify the legend. And when you're in viewing mode, when you're in consumer mode, that selector is not even going to show, so we'll just say region right there. So let's go back to editing mode, and let's go back to my properties. Now, the legends can sometimes create some white space, and if you'd like to fill that in, uh, one thing that I sometimes do is I turn on the description for the visualization in the legend. Right now, I don't have a description. Um, I'll put something in here. I have something on my clipboard prepared, and I'm going to turn it off on the top visualization. So now, what I have is a little bit of explanation about what's happening in this chart, and that's shown on the right over there. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is a little trick using a tree map as a legend. And I like this because it creates a nice little button view, a nice little tile view, and it's very clear to the user uh, where to click and how that maps to the chart. So let's take a look here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is turn off this legend, and I'm going to go to my chart, and I'm going to select a tree map. Now, when I'm going to pull the tree map over here, I'm going to remove uh, these column selector settings for color by, and size by. So now these are all the same size and they're all the same color. And for my hierarchy, I'm going to choose my region value. So this is for each region. And now let's go to my color by and I'm going to go to my properties. Let's make this, re let's make this region as well. And instead of unique count, I'm going to use first. I need to use an aggregation method for tree maps. And first will just be the first value um, for, that, uh, for that row. So I'm going to use first. And on my coloring, I'm going to actually color this from another visualization. I'm going to color this from my colony yield average deviation, and I'm going to color to match values. OK, so now I'm going to close this out. And let's just uh, narrow this down a little bit. And in my settings, I'll just turn off my title. Um, you can also make the title say legend if you'd like, but um, I just turn it off. And now I see that I have these values that are kind of acting like a legend here, and all the colors match, so quite simple. Now, the nice thing about a tree map is that you can use more than 29 values in that color by area. And 
I honestly don't recommend using more than five or six values for categorical color themes, and I'll show you why in a second. But there are some situations where you might need to do that. Uh, we see this a lot in the oil and gas industry where you have lots of wells and you want to color them differently. Um, so there are exceptions to that rule, but let me, let me show you what I mean here. All right, so now going back into my chart, I'm going to turn on the legend, and I'm going to pick a column that has more than 29 values, state. There's 50 values there. Now when you look at this, each state has its own value, and in my opinion, they can kind of run together. You have light blues, medium blues, dark blues, turquoise blues, and light yellows, and it's hard to necessarily tell um, where you know one is, where the other one is, but people do like this because you can select the values in the legend, uh, and it, it makes it really easy. So a recommendation that I have is if you're if you're trying to do that and you need more than 29 values, it's to go into uh, your tree map and you can use um, for your hierarchy. You can use state here, and I'm going to color this by uh, state as well. And first, and and now I can actually um, see all the states. I can see more than 29. I'm going to scroll down here to show you. See, there's only 29 that will show here. Um, I can see more than 29 here, um, and uh, that makes it a little bit easier to work with. But what if you have hundreds of values, or thousands of values, or even millions or billions, which is kind of crazy, but I don't know, maybe it would happen for you. Uh, the tree map itself could get really crowded, those tiles can get really small, it's not really usable. So I'm going to show you a trick using a cross table now. So diving back in, I'm going to bring in a cross table, and I'm going to close out this tree map. Okay, I have this cross table, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit state here for the first column, and for here I am going to uh, remove it, and for here I'm going to remove it. Um, now we have each individual state, but the cross table won't let me color this first column. And furthermore, if I try to shrink it, which I'm going to show you why this is important in a second, if I try to shrink it, that first character is going to show up. So what I do here is I just create a calculated column, and I'll take um, you know state, and I'll go home, and I'll say let's see, concatenate here, um, and I'll concatenate just a couple underscores, and then state, and then I'll close it out, and let's just call this state zero for now. I'll hit OK. Now, this isn't the most elegant solution, but it does work. So if you really need to have you know, tons of legend values, this is, uh, this is a good way forward for you. So it can still be helpful for you. So going back here, I'm now going to change this to state 0, that column I just created. I'm going to shrink that over. And I'm going to make this value state. And again, I'm going to use first. And I'm going to just name this state, OK? So now we have all the states here, and it keeps scrolling down. I'm going to turn off my axis selectors, and then I'm going to go into my properties, and I'm going to go into my color, and I'm going to add a color scheme grouping for state. And I'm going to color this by the unique values, and again, I'm going to have this match from um, my other chart, which is average deviation. So I'll do color match values. This isn't going to change right now because these are both on the default, but that's how you would do it. And now if you uh, bring this over, now you have um, as many values as you need in a legend. And you can also, you know, you can turn off the, uh, the title bar as well. Um, and that's just a, a nice little workaround that might help you. Now, I just want to point out that I put both of these methods, the tree map and the cross table method, as community articles. I'll put the links in the video description. Um, you can find a step-by-step -step guide for each of these. And uh, I hope this tip helps you. I hope you guys join us next time. And be sure to subscribe to keep getting more tips. Thanks, and see you next time.